plantar fascia and the central band. It's important, as with all ultrasound evaluations, to understand the anatomy of what you're looking at. Think about positioning the patient uh, so that you can dynamically evaluate and move tissues easily and also apply enough pressure. Uh, you need to understand the skeletal landmarks as well, in particular the calcaneus. And certainly you need to understand the physics of ultrasound image generation so you can optimise your machine by changing frequency and gain to see this structure really, really well. The central band of the plantar fascia uh, is one of three bands, the central, lateral and medial. Uh, the medial uh, tubercle of the calcaneus is where this central band originates from and then thins out over the deeper position of the flexor digitorum brevis muscle, which we'll see in a second. The central band is the thickest and easiest to see. This is what we're going to see on ultrasound. So we're going to see the calcaneus is that bright white bony landmark. The plantar fascia comes through to attach onto it in this long axis view. The FDB sits deep to the plantar fascia and then the fat pad and subcutaneous layer sit superficially above the structures. This is an example of pathology. On the left-hand image here, we can see a normal plantar fascia measuring less than four millimetres in thickness. And on the right, a markedly thickened plantar fascia at 6.4. This is what we're looking for, gross significant changes in thickness that are easy to identify. And it's always useful to compare to the contralateral limb. This is a live scan now of the plantar fascia and you can see the patient's inside line. We can see the calcaneus very nicely and we can use the windlass mechanism to just to ensure that we're on the right structure, optimising our depth to see this image very clearly and then thinking about changing our frequency. So reducing frequency will change our image, uh, enable greater penetration of sound waves but potentially lose resolution. So this is a lower frequency image here. We can see the plantar fascia very nicely but we lose a little bit of that resolution uh, so I'm going to change my frequency back up again and you can see the plantar fascia there very nicely onto the calcaneus. Certainly need to be applying a fair bit of probe pressure here as well to, to get enough echoes down to these structures and think about that region where you're going to measure uh, for pathological change. Just to confirm, this is the calcaneus. This is the key landmark uh, to look for when you're starting to scan this region. And again, we can look at this dynamically with the windlass mechanism, first MTP joint extension, uh, dynamically tensions that up. Now we can go into short axis, which is a little bit trickier in some ways to see. Again, highlighting that calcaneus, and on top of it, you'll see the plantar fascia and using an isotropy to try and see if you can isolate it. Once you've got a really nice clear image, uh, you can actually also just palpate the subcutaneous fat layer uh, also, just to try and create a little bit of an interface to help you see the difference between the tissue layers, between the fat pad and the plantar fascia uh, itself. And this can be quite useful.